show. Who would win a potential Thunder Blazers playoff series? And should the Bucks be considered title favorites? The Warriors? The Lakers? This guy eating pizza? Who will take home worst of the week? And shout out to God Sham God. We're going to count down the top 10 plays from the past seven days. It's Friday, March 8th. The starter starts now. Welcome to the Starters, presented by Jack Daniels, Old Number no. Seven, and Tennessee Honey. I'm J.E. Skeets. Alongside me, as always, Tas Mellis. We got the Aussie Lee Ellis, and over yonder, that's the bearded one. That's Trey Kirby. Hey yo! Hey yo! Trey, what's up on a Friday night? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the Starters. And guys, the Blazers played in Portland last night, and the game was on TNT, so you know what that means. The return of really tan Portland <laughs> Ken, a guy whose actual name is Ron, who has met the inside guys, been on the show a few times, apparently hooked Ernie up with some cologne, has a brilliant watch, and has become kind of a signature fan for the Portland Trail Blazers, which brings us to today's question. Who is your favorite signature NBA fan? We're not talking about celebrity fans. We're talking signature fans, like the Memphis Grizzlies bongo lady, AKA Melinda Meacham, <laughs> AKA the 2014 <laughs> Starters Fan of the Year, who would go absolutely wild anytime the bongo cam was on in the grindhouse, even had a jersey made. Ooh. Straight up bongo lady, we love her, and we wanna hear from you. So let us know on Twitter, who is your favorite signature NBA fan? Send them to us at hashtag the starters. We'll hear from you later. All right, get your tweets in. Got a fun one tonight. Gonna hand out worst of the week. We got the best top 10 in sports. Lee's got a very solid play. You know a bounce pass is gonna be involved. But we start here on Friday night by checking the polls. This is the segment where we ask you, the starters fan, to vote on some of the day's biggest NBA questions. So let's go to the poll master, Trey Kirby, to take us through them. Trey. Fun game last night between the Thunder and Blazers. There was trash talk, technicals, an ejection, big scoring numbers, and eventually a win for the Thunder, who swept the season series with Portland. These two teams could easily meet in the playoffs, so we asked the fans if they do meet in the playoffs, who would win? Guys, it's a blowout. 84% wow. of people pulling a Garth Brooks and rolling with the Thunder. You guys agree? 84. 84%? Yeah. You think that's a little high? That's not high. It's definitely high. Yeah. People are seeing that they swept the season series after the Blazers swept the season series last year and rolling with the Thunder because I believe their superstars can do a little bit more. And because of that, their supporting players don't have to do as much. And the Blazers rely on those supporting players like they did last year in the playoffs when the Pelicans tried to take away Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum. The other players didn't step up. Like last night, mm -hmm. Rodney Hood who was brought in at the trade deadline. Mo Harkless, Jake Lehman, everybody besides Lillard and McCollum really couldn't hit the three ball whatsoever. And that's an issue. And, and I'm worried, I know Evan Turner wasn't there, but I don't think he solves that issue. And this is at home when your role players are supposed to play better. So I go superstars, Thunder, plus role players. So I, I think 84, quite high. But I, I would definitely take the Thunder in, in a shorter series. Yeah, I think, I mean, you're looking at the entire series. That doesn't take into account whether it would be a sweep or a seven-game series. Yeah. And, and I definitely favour the Thunder, mainly because of Paul George as well. He's the best player out of those two teams. And he makes such a difference to Oklahoma City on both ends of the floor. Offensively, he's fantastic. Right now, he's coming back from injury. He wasn't, didn't shoot all that well last night. But in general... It allows Oklahoma City to be a lot more aggressive defensively as well, putting someone like Paul George, if needed, on a Lillard or a McCollum, and then making those other guys, like you mentioned, the Portland supporting cast, beat them, which they have struggled to do. And I think Oklahoma City is just a better team than they were last season that went out in the first round yeah. to the Utah Jazz. They're a bit more experienced. And Paul George has just shown this year. I mean, he's third or fourth in the MVP voting, depending on, on how you rank those. He's taken a step up, and I think Russell Westbrook's understood, even though he was great again last night, if Paul George is really in control of that team, the Thunder are a very good team. Their ceiling is challenging the Warriors, I think. So I agree with the fans. I don't think it would be a sweep in the series, but I definitely would give the edge to the Thunder. Well, a couple of things. We know how um, Kenny and Chuck voted in this. They were <laughs> backing the Blazers. They like them going to the finals. I hope we get this series, though, in all honesty. I hope it's oh, yeah. a 4-5 or five situation because these teams legit hate each other. And we saw it last night. I mean, we had the flagrants and the techs and the ejection with Nurkic. What did you guys think of the whole how that went down with that was him a getting the tech there? You that think was that was intentional? That, yeah. Yes, it was. Of course it was. He kind of went towards Russell. He, yeah. That was not a direct line. He went to the left. He veered left. Gave yeah. him a flat tire. So, yeah, Westbrook got the flagrant there. Nurk just the tech. But that came back to uh, hurt him, obviously, in the end because after taking an elbow yeah. from Paul George... With five seconds left, you know, I don't like I don't like seeing him get tossed for that. Nurkic, you, Nurkic well, with yeah. he, he went up to him and they had a conversation. There's a bonk. 
There's, but he's not getting tossed <laughs> just for that. Yeah, that's his second just tackle. A tech, and, yeah. that's well, and that deserves a tech. He, he headbutts him. Uh, yeah, I, if, I'm already in playoff mode. I, I'm seeing <laughs> this want, as a playoff the series. Let that yeah, go. 15 seconds left. Yeah, just let her, let, let her go. It's hard I to understand. let a headbutt go in that situation. And, and I understand Nurkic probably felt he deserved to get one called against Paul George the other way. So he feels like he's, he's down or he's behind. But you still can't act like that. You can't headbutt somebody and, and not get a technical foul for it. Now, if he doesn't do the other one earlier with Russell Westbrook, right. he only has... Headbutt well, away. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, throw all the headbutt you want. No, but, you know, he, he, he knows he's in that position where another tech get, does yeah, get thrown out. he lost his cool there. He did. He, he lost did. It. And, they and, got and, under his skin. I mean, Westbrook all game and, and, yeah. and then Paul George And the look end. at how yeah. close his game was. I mean, talk about playoffs. That was a playoff-like game and atmosphere yes. and he cannot behave like that if it was a playoff imagine that was a game six or a game or a pivotal game five. Oh, it's and, right yeah. pivotal we all know it's yeah. game five um, that's so, why they call him the bosnian butt yeah well especially <laughs> when he <laughs> it's a bosnian beast i think but oh, yes it's not but right. but he goes out and then you saw the thunder going at and his canter yeah. in overtime you know canter is going to give you points he's going to rebound he's going to hit the offensive glass he is not going to stop many guys especially in a pick and roll situation they targeted him, and they went at him mm. time and time again. Nurkic does a better job. So, no, you're absolutely right. He just lost his cool, and, and in the end, the two techs, you know, Cost got him. ejected. It's an old-school exactly. series, though, an old-school oh. relationship between these two teams. It's fun. Yeah, and I think it would be a long series. No matter who you ultimately pick, I think it does go six or seven for sure. All right, what's our next one here, Trey? The Bucks beat the Pacers last night thanks to 29 points, 15, 12 rebounds, 5 assists, and what felt like 100 dunks from Giannis Antetokounmpo. The Bucks have the best record in the league. They're the only team yet to qualify for the playoffs, and they have this season's MVP. So we asked the people, should the Bucks be considered championship favorites? And no surprise, 68% of people said no because the Warriors are still in the NBA. Yeah. Agree? That's yeah, fair. yeah, that's fair. I actually I'm almost uh, was a little shocked by 32% saying maybe they should be, but I think here's why those people are voting that way. What the Bucks are doing right now, they are putting up one of the greatest regular seasons we've seen in NBA history. That's not hyperbole there. You know, like the way they're doing it, net rating, how, how badly they're crushing teams, being the best defense in the league, being a top three offense. They're doing it on both sides of the floor. They're obviously deep. They've got an MVP in Giannis. Like, all the pieces are there. Yeah. And, you know, over the last 25 years, only four teams, MJ's 95-96 Bulls, and then three Warriors teams, like 14-15 all the way through to 16-17, have been better against teams that were ultimately finished 500 or better. So they're playing really, really well yeah. against really good teams. Um, yeah, the problem is the Warriors are still in the league, and they are still stacked. I know they maybe look a little more vulnerable, but that's the, it's tough to talk yourself into another team beating them. But, but I can see reasoning is what I'm getting at. But even in the Eastern Conference, I'm not just – giving them the stroll letting them no, stroll right. to the to the NBA finals. They're going to go from zero series wins to three automatically to get to the finals. That's a heck of a jump. Giannis Antetokounmpo is a guy you seemingly can ride and you can ride you know for a couple rounds yep. I imagine, but I just I think it's a lot more even amongst those top teams in the Eastern Conference then even that poll would you, lead you to believe. Uh, the other thing that wasn't on that stat board right there is the Bucks aren't getting carried away with this season, which is a great sign. that they're not, They don't feel like, oh, well, we're, we're dominating everyone. Right. It's just a matter of now getting to the playoffs and then we're going to cruise through. They understand that they haven't won a playoff series. They haven't really been there before and they need to prove that this regular season isn't just a regular season that we're going to forget about. They have to go out and do it again in the playoffs, on the road. You know, they're going to have to win in places where they haven't done it before. And I think that's a good sign though, that the Bucks understand that this, that it's great, but it doesn't count for anything if they don't go on in the playoffs and make something of this season. I'm not the first to make this comparison, but you could talk yourself into this 18-19 Bucks being the 14-15 Warriors. And what I mean by that is the year prior, the Warriors under Mark Jackson, you know, they went out in the first round. Mm. They faltered early. They were 60 and they went out. Then they bring in Steve Kerr. Well, the Bucs, they lose last year in a seven-game series, just like the Warriors also lost to the Clippers way back when. And they got Mike Budenholzer. They completely switch up their style. They got an MVP. The Warriors had Curry in his first one. You got the Giannis likely winning this one. And they're the number one defense in the league. Like, there are similarities yeah. between, yeah, this craziness of a team sort of, in a way, coming out of nowhere because you've got your MVP and you got your new coach and you just ride it out. I'm not saying the Bucs are going to win the series here, but again... I can see why you can go, wow, maybe we are sleeping on the Bucs, mm. even though they're the number one team in the league record-wise. The Warriors had won a playoff series. They had won it the year prior. Prior, yeah. That's right. And, That's and right. Andrew Bogut was out against that yep. Clippers series. So, you know, yeah, a little different. slightly different, but a similar sort of growth and, and, um, and, and came, coming out of nowhere almost. Trey, our final one. All right, 42-year-old Vince Carter went on PTI yesterday, and when he was asked 
If he had an age he wanted to reach before he stopped playing, Vince responded, 43. That's next year. What a funny guy. <laughs> so we asked the fans, how many more seasons is Vince Carter going to play? Guys, they're playing it safe. 64% of people think Vince is done after next season, though 20% think we got another two years of Vince. You guys agree? I saw some people on Twitter saying there should have been an option forever. Forever. And he just plays forever. I mean, yeah, I think he's going to play at least one more. I mean, I, I couldn't tell if he was sort of joking on PTI. It was like they were talking about, oh, Brady says he's going to play until he's 45. What about you? Eh, I'll go one more. He just nonchalantly threw it in there. But why wouldn't he at this point? He's contributing, mm -hmm. you know, in very limited minutes, about 15 minutes per game. But he's hitting a career-high three-pointers. He's hitting nearly 41% of his threes. Yeah, I think more That's importantly, amazing. though, his body's holding up. Yeah. You know, he's actually playing, and, and you know, he, he's only playing a handful of minutes, but he's out there. He doesn't look like Dirk, who is struggling to get up and down the floor. Yeah. His yeah. body's letting him down a little bit. Vince has always had an incredible body. He takes care of himself. If he's feeling good and he's contributing and he's a veteran presence, which a lot of teams like, right. I, I think there will be teams interested in having him as a deep rotation player. He lasts another season for sure because he hasn't been getting his TV reps here in Atlanta. <laughs> That'll happen next year. He hasn't been coming down to the NBA TV's TNT studios right, right. to get his work in for his second career, although he's been doing the podcasting. So maybe maybe he's got something in mind, but I think he's got one more year. And yeah, that final year could be up in Toronto too. Possible. Go home to the Raptors. End it where it all started. Bring a championship home. When we come back, Task Awards the Dishonor for Worst of the Week. Don't go anywhere. The Starters is presented by Jack Daniels Old Number no. 7 and Tennessee Honey. Welcome back to the show. We cover the best league, but sometimes even the best make mistakes. It's time for Worst of the Week. Ladies and gentlemen, the Worst of the Week. First nominee is not a player. It's a fan who is struggling to eat pizza in Little Caesars Arena in Detroit because he was sleepy, sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh! oh! He's mid-chew <laughs> and sleeping. <laughs> but the but, drop pizza yeah. wakes him up right away. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Oh, and he drops the other one, too. Yeah, he <laughs> drops it all. What is, uh, what is up with pizza in Detroit? Wasn't that the spot where Jeff Teague, after a game in Detroit, was holding a pizza, his pizza box, like it was oh, books? Pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, that, and the internet went nuts. Like, who holds a pizza? Like a laptop. <laughs> at least he's not asleep, though, at the time. No, he's not asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Not maybe, as bad. Maybe it was a cold. Cold pizza. Nothing's happening to a cold pizza that goes. Oh, you're vertical. talking Jeff Teague? I'm yeah. talking Jeff. Yeah, what about mm. the sleepy guy? Just... The sleepy guy is sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> Something caused him to be very sleepy. Who knows what it was? I have an idea. Uh, <laughs> second nominee, Trey Young's ejection against the Bulls on Sunday. They just had a great game on Friday, a four overtime game. So Trey Young, he talks a little bit of junk to Chris Dunn. He doesn't even talk. He just no, stares. So. He simply hits a shot and stares. He had already received a first tech, so that was his second tech, and he, they say goodbye to him for no reason. It was, yeah, it was very unfortunate. He did hit a very imposing double teapot, though, throwing both <laughs> his arms akimbo. Mm -mm. Mm. Even the first tee, I'm not even sure it warranted a, a, a technical. Right. It was a little bit more questionable because there's a little bit of... Yeah. Uh, that's not, he gets hit in the head. I mean, that's... <laughs> I, I think Chris Dunn should have got one in, yeah. the, in this instance, and Trey Young shouldn't. Trey, Trey did touch him, but man. <laughs> a touch and a stare. It's, Double ejection, get out of here. Yeah, we're getting a, a little bit tense. Reggie Miller was very upset over that on Instagram, and rightfully so. Yeah. Uh, the winner, though, the Los Angeles Lakers. LeBron James isn't going to the playoffs. I, I can't believe it. It was a season of such promise that essentially ended this week. They're yeah. not mathematically out of it, but... Uh, they're done. Uh, poor play, poor defensive effort. When they're in fourth spot on Christmas Day when LeBron got injured, he came back, and since then, things have been going basically like this. <laughs> yeah. And and there has also been talk of a bad culture that free agents may not want to join because of incidents like Rajon Rondo not sitting with his teammates. And Rondo says that's not a big deal. You're making a big deal out of it. He does it all the time. He does it all the time. Yeah. So. I won't disagree that Rondo does yeah. that kind of thing all the time because he does his own thing yeah. all the time. But unfortunately, I, I think Rondo's relationship is going to be done with the Lakers. If he goes back and is a good teammate throughout this season, maybe he can come back. But I think LeBron's the only guy who's guaranteed to be there next year. I, 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 is Ingram guaranteed to be there? No, I don't think anybody is. else is guaranteed to, to be there. Are the Lakers in the running for worst of the year? This I don't a couple think so. Times. Wow. wow. I mean, it's been a... 
It's been a rough year. Had a pretty strong 2019. Though. <laughs> what the, the, they had the, the trade scenarios. Yeah. yeah. But what else other, other than some well, just bad play? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. A disappointing season. <laughs> for disappointing, sure. Disappointing. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be a bloodbath, honestly, to figure out who's worst of the year this year. There have been quite a few candidates. Yeah. Uh, what about the minutes restriction in being imposed on LeBron James? About 32 minutes per game and not sitting out back-to-back, -back, or, or playing in only back-to-backs, one game of back-to-backs, I should say. Maybe he's going for that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar record, Skeets. Maybe he's doing it. Maybe he's playing just to go get the number one spot. I mean, look, and, and with the Lakers, it gets even worse. Right now, it's sounding like Lonzo Ball's not going to come back at all. Not that, again, it's really going to matter and help a playoff chase because they are basically out of it. But, yeah, no, the, the, the LeBron thing is what we talked about. I thought he would past Michael Jordan in, in the point scored, and then at some point when they were when they, when they are truly mathematically mm -hmm. eliminated, I either think, you know, the groin acts up again, he sits here and there, he's already going to sit in these back-to-back -back situations. Like, that just makes sense to me. Right? Mm -hmm. It does. Unless he really wants to go out there and get those 25 points, 30 points a game to, to help the chase of Kareem. But the minutes restriction seemingly came a little bit early. Yeah. Just right now. Yeah. But nobody cares because they're essentially out of the playoffs. They're... There was a lot more of a hubaloo last week about it, but now when it was announced, meh. No one cares. No one cares. Less of a hubaloo. Less of a hubaloo. Oh, Catman. <laughs> when we come back. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I've already seen Catman. Oh, no. Why did I play Carly at the test? Welcome back to the starters. Time to count down the top 10 plays from the past seven days. Let's start at number 10. That makes sense. And it's Tony Snell. Drop oh. it, Boyan Bogdanovich. Yeah, he's got him searching for his contact lenses. Oh, like you're doing downward facing dog. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mine feels good. <laughs> Quick <laughs> yoga session in there. Oh, Snell beautiful little finish there. Yeah, that's right. At number nine, a rare Devin Booker jam. Ooh, whoa. I'm in. That's right, yeah, right on confused. AD. He was playing at this point, Lee. <laughs> yeah. Must have been the first seven minutes of a quarter. Yeah. I'll get him, I'll get him. At number eight, we're heading to Holland for some windmills. <laughs> Star Fox all alone. Smooth windmill. Yeah. Jimi Hendrix oh, out that there. That hit Yeah. Yeah. And then Rashawn Holmes. Oh, just one step, that's all he needs. Look at the ups and power behind that one. Mostly with a headband on. Yep where the power comes from. Mm. At number seven, this is power. Carl Anthony Towns. Ooh. Got my dude. There it is. <laughs> and he's raising the roof. Oh, that's back. <laughs> he doesn't need any wind power. He can raise the roof himself. <laughs> Ooh. Big stuff there from Kat. All right, we got a block party at number six. Two blocks. Miles Turner. Oh. Rejects Ross. We've got the most blocks in the league this year, Miles Turner. He's going to be in the running for defensive player yep. of the year. And another one. This one's crazy. Tatum oh. from behind on KD. Yeah, the block snatch there. Yeah. A little yeah. fumble there. KD, yeah. But didn't get it clean, but still he did. Great <laughs> defense there at number five. Some great offense. Three alley oops. Anthony Davis on the other end. Oh, Rudy Gobert. <laughs> it's hampered. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh. The fish. And then Miles Bridges of the Charlotte Hornets. Oh, the guys, lefty. Nice catch Ooh. right there. And then the Bulls are working hard. Jim Boylan loves it. Oh, yes, the save. Zach Levine, the throw down. Archie. Oh, oh, oh the road dog's going crazy. <laughs> Ryan Archie, Diagno, what a play. Zach, what a throw down. Hustle leads to the move at number four. D'Angelo Russell with Ooh. the perfect sham gun. And then the pretty finish. There it is. Woo! Oh, that's pretty. Mm. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. At number three, it's uh, mm, mm, Derek White on Alex Len. What a throwdown. Oh, what a ball down as yeah. well. Yeah, he's the ground hard there. That's intense. Bang. April is nearing. At number two, Bradley Beal on Mesri. Oh, on your real deal. And look. I'm glad we don't have the officials uh, in the same game as Trey Young here because Bradley Beal really stares down Mesri after putting him on a poster. There's a hole through the back of his head. He's thinking, who is this guy? He's just trying to get a better look. Uh, here we go, Miles Turner. Oh! oh. The rare dunk wow. in the top 10 for Miles Turner. No, no, no. I, that's not a dunk test. You're right. It's, a, it's the cousin of the dunk, it's the thrunk. Oh! Extension. 
Good beat to Miles Turner. That's right. That's right. Agree, disagree, what we miss, let us know. Hashtag the Sturgers. The top 10 plays. When we come back, there's only one play, but you know it's very solid. <laughs> Friday night, crunch time on NBA TV, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern. Sign me up. Catch all the great finishes from tonight's game, again, on crunch time. All right, we asked you, what's your favorite signature NBA fan? You can't be a celebrity, okay? You hit us up on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Trey, what do you got? Uh, I got some great suggestions. Number one, oh. Oh. Lakers. Yeah, you got to get that guy in. You also got to include Dance Pam, oh, yeah. Mom. Yep. She's got the moves. Also like this, a throwback to Jiggly Boy <laughs> up in Minnesota. <laughs> and then, of course, we've got Raptors super fan. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Shout out yeah. to Miles yeah. and the other Raptors super fan. That's Das Mullen! Yeah. <laughs> we said no celebrities. Good job picking no celebrities. Look at uh, that thumb dexterity. I love that pick. I love that pick so much. Uh, last night's pick and results, we all had the Blazers. Wow. And we all lost in overtime. That's an L for everybody. Tonight's game. It's Thunder in LA to take on the Clippers. Trey and Lee like the Clippers at home. Tess and I are flipping it up now and we're going with the Thunder. Ooh, Picked flip. against them last night, but we're taking them tonight. Good luck, everybody. All right, Lee Lee, VSP. We two are games going, from yeah, only two games. Doesn't matter. You, the teams know they have to perform and this time it's Nurk doing work, finding Dame on a dime. It's a dollar with a holler. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the players. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call. A hey! 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 <laughs> Thanks, Ken slash Ron, <laughs> for those thumbs. All right, the Drop Podcast. We had a blast today recording this. It's now available to download. Shout out to everybody that listens to it on Apple Podcasts. Leave us that five star rating. Leave us the review. Tell your friends. We got into so much, got into another heated debate about will LeBron catch Kareem Abdul Jabbar all time in points scored. And we had a question about pairing a brand with a celebrity. Trade a great answer. There's no better match to me than Lee Ellis and AK Threads Clothing.com. <laughs> That's AK Threads Clothing.com. Baggy clothes for swaggy bros. <laughs> Baggy clothes for swaggy bros. Yeah. yeah. You're always giving a shout out to AK Threads. AK Threads Clothing.com, yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Sorry, they don't pay me anything. <laughs> <laughs> but then you also have like another clothing company. Yeah. Do they oh, know yeah. that you're like. Yeah, I mean, you got you got a clothing. Playing them, yeah. No, look, it's uh, it's like teammates. You know, you need different teammates who perform different roles. So this is a J Crew special, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great <laughs> weekend. We'll see you on Monday. <laughs> All right, ten before tip with Jared Greenberg coming up. Brace the weekend, people. Can't wait to see what you're wearing on Monday. <laughs>